What's up guys, Max Maxworks here, and today we are working on this beautiful girl. This is my 06 Triumph Speed Triple uh, with the blue and white. I actually owned this bike about five years ago. My longtime viewers will remember. I actually reviewed this bike, like I said, five years ago probably. It wasn't this bike. I had one exactly like it, except mine was super immaculate. And one of the first uh, mods I did to it was I modified uh, the header. I basically ported the header, removed the resonator, uh, and got a free-flowing exhaust and then tuned it. And to this day, hands down, it was my favorite bike. It was the only bike I've ever regretted selling. And that was my favorite mod that I, I did to it at the time. Um, because it completely changes the way the bike responds. It gives you a massive top end gain. Um, and it kind of shifts the power band around. And it gives it an even more authentic speed triple shrill shriek that I absolutely love. But uh, I actually wrote the DIY for it on a forum um, that's still around today. I'll uh, link down below. Unfortunately, social media and YouTube has kind of killed the uh, online forum. Uh, but that's kind of a topic for another day. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do the port work on this bike, how to modify the header, uh, remove the collector, um, and retune it. Uh, so the only thing to keep in mind before you start this project is you do have to drain the oil. So this is an excellent time to do an oil change on the bike. I got new filters. Um, and to really take advantage of the tune, you should also replace the factory air cleaner. Uh, BMC used to make a really, really nice air filter. I bought a Canon this time because um, the BMC was just really hard to find. You have to import it from Europe. I guess they don't really make them anymore. Um, so none of the American uh, vendors had stock. So uh, because you have to remove the oil cooler, you do have to drain the oil. So we got the bike up on the lift here. Um, and I'm going to start getting some stuff going. Um, and I'll tune back in with you guys uh, when we start draining the oil and, and point a few things out. So, <clears throat> to drain the oil, there's an oil dipstick on the other side. There is a filter right there, which looks pretty gross. And a drain bolt, which is right there, uh, which doesn't look too gross. Looking at the dipstick, I think the guy I bought this bike from changed the oil for me. Um, but it doesn't look like he changed the filter, which is a waste of time anyway. So we're going to dump all this. We got fresh oil for the girl. So we went and installed a new K&N 204-1 filter. Um, I've talked about my use of K&N filters in videos before. That 17 millimeter nut makes it very easy to change. This bike is very serviceable, uh, but on some bikes it's a lot more of a pain. And I just, I love that design. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this drain plug back in the motor. Our engine oil is drained out. Um, and now we can move on to removing the oil cooler. Next step is removing these lines. There's two of these eight millimeter bolts that hold uh, each of these on. I've taken this one off. You can see the oil is draining. We're going to pull off the other one here in a minute. And then there's going to be eight millimeter bolt up here. I think a eight millimeter bolt down there and eight millimeter bolt over there to physically remove this oil cooler. Uh, and get it up out of the way and that'll give us access to these bolts up in here uh, to pull the whole header assembly off. So there are three total mount points. There was the bolt up here, a bolt down here, and a bolt over there. And then this whole assembly slides out. And now if I grab this, you can see there's space to get in there up to the header bolts. Um, and I've hit them with a little PB blaster. We'll give them a minute to soak. Uh, and then we'll take them off. So there's six nuts total. They're really easy to remove if you have this, this kind of swivel U-joint style uh, adapter um, and a uh, electric wrench or do it by hand, it's not a big deal. They take a 13 millimeter socket. So now all of those are off. We can migrate our way to the right hand side of the bike. And here, there's really nothing that attaches this exhaust except for this, which I think is also a 13 millimeter socket. So we can remove this. Um, and remove this and then actually the entire exhaust can come off, but we're going to um, Separate them. So there's a clamp back here. We're going to separate these leave the uh, This piece on there because it's got a O2 sensor and we don't need it This is the bolt from here. It's a 12 millimeter. There's a non-captive nut on the back. It's kind of a pain to reach um, This is just a slip joint. This guy came off of here. We're just gonna set this aside. This exhaust has nothing to do with anything so now this should, may need to adjust that clamp, there we go. 
This should just slip right out. I'm gonna have to set the camera down and bring you guys over to the workbench. So here's our header. Um, there's a few things I wanna point out. First of all, as you can see, this is all sooty. You can see how smaller this is and how much uh, meat there is here. Um, you can actually take this out pretty far. You can port this out pretty far. Um, and I'll show you guys the engine here in a minute and try to give you a, a good comparison. But this is kind of the parts we're gonna port. We're gonna port all of these um, with an air grinder and then we're going to smooth them out with some sandpaper and make them nice and smooth. Back over here, there's this uh, resonator thing that's back here. Um, it's basically held on with one, two, three, and four spot welds. You drill out those welds, then you kind of just break the thing out, and then you have to weld this up. This is stainless. I'm going to TIG it up. Um, it's not really a big deal. So I'm going to get this uh, into the vise, and we're going to start with that, actually. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. It just depends on your preferred methodology. I like to use a flap disc, take these flush, and then either drill them out or punch them out. So that's what I'm going to do. What I'm actually going to do is plug this back into power. And then I'm going to do all those things I said I was going to do. Okay, so now what you do is you kind of use a pry bar and you can see it moving around in there. And there's just somewhere that it's still a little stuck. And the goal of this is to kind of break it loose from whatever metal part it's stuck on. And there we go. A little resonator comes out. Um, for whatever reason, a lot of people call this a cat, a catalytic converter. Uh, this is not. This is not a catalytic converter. This doesn't do shit except lower the decibel level. Um, it's just made out of steel. It's definitely not a cat. So now we get to fire up. Uh, we're going to clean this up and then fire up the TIG and then TIG weld these holes shut. And then we can move on to porting the header. So, to the question, can you uh, MIG weld this? It's stainless, you absolutely can, uh, but do it right, get a TIG. If you don't have a TIG, make a friend. Uh, you'd be surprised what somebody like me will do for a six pack of beer. I don't know how much the GoPro captures it, but basically the technique is you want to fill the hole with your um, welding wire, and then you want to start the puddle and carry it. I like to carry it from the welding wire onto the outside of the loop and basically just go in a little circle. Uh, this stuff is, is reasonably thick, so it fills okay. I've definitely worked on stuff that um, is a lot thinner and doesn't, doesn't like this procedure nearly as much, but, well, that's pretty much it for this side. I'm going to go ahead and weld uh, the other two on the other side and we'll be done with this part of the project. Excellent. I was welding about, uh, I think, 70 amps, something like that. Um, I'm sure that there's plenty of welding gods that will tell you that that's way too much power or not enough power or my technique is shit or whatever. But uh, this is how I weld and it seems to work pretty well for me. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to port this out. And basically what you're looking for is to smooth this transition and basically enlarge in these two sides and trim this point a little bit. Um, it's not like a tremendous amount of work, but you can take it off. I'm actually going to use this. This is my smallest um, grinder. Um, I might also use this one a little bit. We'll see. These I'm going to use to remove the majority of the material that I'm going to go in here with a smaller sanding piece. Um, this basically just takes time and skill and you do it by hand. Um, I'll show you guys the finished product, uh, but the actual art kind of behind porting stuff like this is just that. Uh, I don't mean to sound like fucking full of myself or full of shit, but this is just one of those things where 
you just have to figure it out and feel it out uh, and and do it your way. You can't really go wrong as long as you don't take too much off. Um, basically, we're just trying to match this up with the ports on the head. I think I remember from my original DIY, it's it's something like like half a millimeter um, is what you want to take off and basically just smooth the transition. So cut back. I got probably like 30 or 40 minutes of grinding in front of me. Cut back. I'll show you guys the finished product. Well, there's our ported headers. You can see everything is nice and smooth. Um, you don't want to cut into this outside lip. You want to get it pretty thin. Um, you can see there's probably a little bit of variation between them. Um, but it's pretty good for a hand port. Um, basically, you just keep at it until it looks the way you want it to look. Um, and so now we can bolt this header back in and start just reinstalling stuff. A couple of tips on the reinstall. Uh, make sure you put these rubber grommets in first. You won't be able to install them once you secure the headers up here. Um, the other thing is this nut back here is really hard to hang on to. So I use a piece of tape and a 12 millimeter wrench and use that to, so it doesn't fall out. Then I can just drive this in. So you can see this is all back uh, reinstalled. Next thing we got to put in is the oil cooler and then uh, should be fully reassembled. So we added in about three and a half quarts of oil to it. I took the opportunity to lube the chain. Now we're going to drop it down. I'm going to go ahead and replace the uh, air filter and then we can tune it. There's not really much to this. You remove the tank. There's a bolt on each side here that holds the fairing, a 10 millimeter bolt that runs through here. If you unplug the fuel pump plug right here, you can get the tank over here. I'm not super concerned about the paint. This doesn't bother me. Otherwise, you can remove the tank entirely. It's just the fuel line that comes off. Uh, a bunch of little screws. This comes out. Be careful. There's an O-ring inside of here. You want to make sure you don't lose it or pinch it. Um, over here is our gross ass factory filter and the trash it goes. And here is our Canon unit. Um, this is TB-1005. Um, so all you do is you take this out and you put it in your bike and you close everything up and you forget about it for the next 20,000 miles. Now this is Tune ECU. This is actually a free software uh, for Triumph, BMW, KTM, Aprilia. Whoever made this is a genius. This interface is honestly one of the best tuning suites I've used, and I've used HP tuners a lot, Tuner Pro RT. This is way better than all of them. Uh, it's very basic, uh, and it has a lot of cool features. So even if you're not retuning your bike, you can use this uh, for diagnostics. You can use it to test certain things uh, and see if they work. Um, but we're going to use as a map edit. Um, I've already saved the original map out of this, um, and I did that. You always want to do that. You always want the first thing you want to do is you want to save your original map. That way, anything goes wrong, you can always go back to it. Down in this bottom corner, there's this flashing yellow light. Um, there we go. Now we're connected. You can see my serial number. You can see the map that's currently in it. Um, and so there's a few things. There's parameters, which controls your rev limit, uh, your fan, speed adjustment. Um, you have, let's see, blah, blah, blah. you also have devices. That's your O2 sensor and your SAI, secondary air injection. Um, I have this currently hooked up to a battery charger and I pulled the fuse for the lights. You can see 14.3 volts uh, on the battery. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually open a map file um, and there's a map that I like to use. Um, let's see, aftermarket, it's this map I believe. So. Uh, speed triple without secondary air induction. This adds ignition at the top end, which makes a huge difference. Uh, the pre-cat removed, um, and we've got a an air cleaner and a full um, you know stock header uh, aftermarket exhaust. Um, and he changed the speedo. Um, we're actually going to change it the other way, uh, but we can load this map in right now. Um, so the rev limit set to 99. 9,900 speed adjustment. We're actually going to do, um, I believe, what is it? We need to go the other way. So we need to do this thing runs uh, 75 miles an hour real life, 80 miles an hour indicated. So we need to do like, I don't know, plus, we'll do plus 3% and see how close that gets us. Um, but now, we can uh, we'll go up here, do ECU, uh, and uh, what is it? 
download and this will write over um, my stock map with this map um, that we just loaded in and this is what makes a huge huge difference basically right now the bike is pretty tame up top you can run it to the limiter bang shift it and it just keeps on pulling with these changes uh, this bike will start lifting the wheel at seven grand and if you bang shift it uh, first and second second to third it will pick up the front tire it is a dramatic difference um, so be aware that you're doing this you're also going to push um, kind of the peak torque up uh, and obviously you're going to raise peak horsepower push peak torque up so it's going to feel a little bit less powerful on like real like taking off from a stoplight but you're really going to enjoy the the throttle pickup and the high end speed the guys that did this map did a fantastic job it was dyno tuned um, and it's very similar to what a lot of folks have on the road uh, i use this map on my old bike i was very happy with it um, so we're going to blow this map into the bike um, takes two or three minutes to download it then we're going to reboot the system and we're going to fire the bike up and make sure it runs make sure there's no check engine lights and later on i'm going to do some more playing around with the speedo um, because I want to get it as close as I can so that you know it's accurate because otherwise it drives me nuts. That's it. We got the bike uh, modified. We got it tuned. We got everything installed. She's ready to ride. Super fucking pleased with myself. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. You can actually check out my review of this bike if you scroll way, 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 way back on the channel, like four or five years. Um, I'm excited, man. This is the bike I've wanted for, for a long time uh, to get back, and uh, now I'm just looking forward to putting some miles on it. Uh, so, again, if you like the channel, hit the like button. If you like this video, subscribe. Check out my other motorcycle videos. Check out my Blazer playlist. Check out my uh, boat playlist and the adventure trailer and all the awesome projects that we build on this channel uh, that are made possible by you guys. Thanks. Peace.